Getting filled at good prices is something that can be a bit tricky when you start in options trading. That's why in this video I wanted to give you some tips on how to get filled at better prices. And if at any point you find this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. I'd really appreciate it. If I show you this bid ask, what are you thinking? You see that the bid is at $86 and the ask is at $94. What are you thinking? Well, this bid ask is absolutely liquid and you're probably gonna have a lot of trouble to get in, but also a lot of trouble to get out with your profits and how do we see that well when you see a bid as that is like several dollar wide you can be sure that this is a market that is really not efficient and liquid at all and it's gonna cost you money and that's the first thing to understand when you're trying to get filled on a trade that you're trying to place is to really try to only trade liquid products that have tight bid as spreads and the fact of having a tight bid as spread means that you're not gonna get filled at prices that are super far from each other and the fact of trading bid ass spreads that are very tight is going to give you a huge advantage because trading tight bid ass spreads allows you to have the best price available because you know that the market is so efficient when it's like only one or two cents why you know that you're going to have the best price possible and the bid ass gives you an indication of how liquid is the product that you're trying to trade the tighter the bid ask the more liquid is the product that you're trying to trade the wider the bid ask the more illiquid is the product that you're trying to trade and now the question is how do i find tight bid ass spreads well to be sure that you're going to find an efficient and liquid market you have to go for stocks that are more well known for example if you look at ETFs such as the SPY which tracks the S&P 500 you can see that regardless of the expiration you go and you look at probably most of the strikes you'll see that the bid ask is very very tight and that's a sign of liquidity because you see that with the SPY or Apple or Tesla or any stocks that is basically well known you're going to see in general that the bid and ask are very tight together and you probably going to find an efficient market for most of the well-known stocks but whenever you go into a stock that is less liquid or options are less liquid the wider the bid ask the more illiquid is the product that you're trying to trade and the more difficult it is going to be for you to get into a trade and get out of a trade with your profits that's why it's the first tip that i apply to myself so as to find liquid stocks and liquid options to trade and that's something that works very well for me and the second tip to get filled faster is to check the open interest and the open interest refers to the number of outstanding contracts that are not settled yet. In other words, it's the number of active positions. And most of the brokers can allow you to check the open interest for most of the strikes that you're looking at. And when you're looking at strikes and you check the open interest, it's going to help you know how many contracts are currently held for that particular strike. And that's a very, very good sign of liquidity because the more active contracts there are for a certain strike, the more liquid is going to be the market for that particular strike. And let's say that you want to buy a put option for AXP, American American Express for the December expiration for example. Let's say that you choose the 85 strike so basically you're looking to buy a put option for the 85 strike and when you check the open interest for the 85 strikes you see that there is not a lot of open interest and a lot of open interest would be around a thousand at a minimum but when you look at the 90 strikes you see that the open interest is around 672 so you can see that there is a big difference between the two in terms of open interest and that's where comes the second tip to get filled faster that I apply to myself that really works well just to adapt the trade depending on the open interest meaning that if the 85 strike really doesn't have a lot of open interest well then choose the 90 strike because it has a lot more open interest and you can know that you can basically get filled at better prices so of course you need to check for yourself and for your strategy if the strike that has a lot of open interest is going to still fit your trade and you still want to go through but i still think that overall it's a great tip to get filled faster because when you go for a strike that has more open interest you're probably sure that you're going to have more participants for that particular strike strikes and so you have more chances of being filled at a better price and on top of that the problem is usually not to get filled at entry but more to get filled at exit when you try to get out of a trade with your profits if you can't get out of a trade because you chose a strike that has a very low open interest you, you're gonna be pissed so that's why it's better to probably choose a strike that has more open interest even though you probably maybe gonna take a bit more risk but at least you'll be able to get in and get out at better prices and once again it's up to you to decide but personally it works very well for me to do it that way.
And another tip that I apply to myself once again that allows me to get filled at better prices is to avoid to trade weekly options. Except for earnings where there is going to be a lot more liquidity and where I'll be able to trade weekly options and still get filled at better prices, in general weekly options are not the best in terms of liquidity. And it's usually better for you to go for a monthly expiration, a quarterly expiration rather than going for weekly expiration. And if I take for instance American Airlines and I look at the December expirations, you can see that there is quite a lot of open an interest the bid ask is quite tight and you're probably going to get filled at probably at good prices for this expiration at least but when you look at the december 18th expiration which is a weekly expiration you can see that there is a lot less liquidity there's a lot less open interest you can see that the bid ask is a lot wider when you see that it's probably gonna be quite hard for you to get filled at good prices and that's something that i found myself is that when i started avoiding to trade weekly options for my longer term portfolio things got a lot better in terms of liquidity and i started getting filled at better prices prices, I was getting out of trades with my profits and I wasn't giving back away all my profits because of, for example, trading illiquid options. And that's something that you can do to improve your pricing overall. And personally, that really helped me a lot. But what if, if you do all of this, you trade monthly expirations, you check the open interest, you check the bid ask and still you can't get filled. It's been like, for example, 30 minutes that you're waiting in front of a trade to get filled. It still doesn't go through. What can you do? And the last thing that I personally apply to myself that I do if I can't get filled is to go toward the not price. So what is the NAT price? It refers to the natural price and it's going to change depending if an option buyer or an option seller. For option buyers, the NAT price is going to be the ask price and for the option sellers, the NAT price is going to be the bid price. And let me give you examples so it's clearer. Let's say that you want to buy an option that is, for example, at $1. Let's say that you want to buy an option. The bid is at $1. The ask is at $106. The mid price, what you're going to get filled in general as the first price is going to be $103 because that's the middle between $1 and 106 but let's say that you try to get filled at 103 and you can't get filled and you start waiting 15 20 minutes 30 minutes and you still can't find someone who can sell you an option for one dollar and three cents what can you do but what you could do in this type of instance is to move your price toward the ask price and what it's going to do is that you're going to pay a bit more but you're going to find more liquidity because what you're essentially doing is okay i'm not gonna buy an option for one dollar and three cents i'm gonna buy the option for one dollar and five cents which is above the mid price but which is more toward the, the ask price that we said before that was at 106. what is going to happen is that someone on the other side who's willing to sell you an option is going to see that you're ready to pay more for that option so of course they're going to sell you that option now that you're ready to pay more for it and that's how you can find liquidity is when you move toward the nat price if you're an option buyer meaning the ask price but if you're an option seller that means going toward the bid price and for example if you're an option seller and you try to sell an option and let's take the same example the bid is at one dollar the ask is at 106 you try to sell an option at 103 you still can get filled well as an option seller what you would want to do in that case is to decrease your limit price toward the bid price so as to find more liquidity and what is going to happen is that if you try to get filled for example at one dollar and one cent someone is going to see on the other side that you're ready to sell an option at a lower price so what is the option buyer going to do of course he's going to buy it because you're going to sell it at a lower price and this tip of moving your price toward the nap price depending if you're an option buyer or an option seller is a really really the ultimate thing that is going to help you find liquidity but personally i found that it's really working only if you're already in a liquid market overall meaning that if you try to get filled on a liquid option you're going to have to give up so much profit or you're going to have to pay so much more so as to be able to get filled and in the end it's really not worth it so this tip is really if you're already in a liquid environment trading a liquid stocks and overall the options are liquid but you still can't get filled for the mid price you could move your price toward the nut price and you will be filled at a worse price but at least you'll get filled and to give you an example of myself i was trying to sell a contract on Capital One Financial and I couldn't get filled for a certain price. I think it was around 53 cents. So what I've done is that I moved it toward the bid price, meaning that I was going to collect less credit as an option seller, but at least I could find liquidity by doing this. And you see that I went from 53 cents to 49 cents. It's a bit annoying to give back a bit of credit because as an option seller, you want to collect more credit because it's going to mean more profit. But if it's the price to get filled and in the end being able to be in the trade, I'm going to do it personally. And usually what I'm going 
to do is that I'm gonna try to place my trade around the mid price. I'm gonna wait for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. If I see that I can't get filled, I'm gonna start moving my price toward the nut price so as to get filled. After that, it's really something that you need to figure out for yourself and to find what what works best for you. Some people want to get filled right away, so they're directly going to get filled toward the nut price. Or some people like to wait and try to get filled at a better price. You do what you want and as long as you're happy with that. And in the end, as long as you're in the green and as long as you're making money, that's really the thing that is the most important. So don't really worry about it. It's really tips to get filled faster. And as long as you're in liquid environments, it's going to be okay. I hope you enjoyed this video on tips on how to get filled faster and at better prices. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment them below. I wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next video.